This Week in Connecticut with Dennis House starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Connecticut. Greetings, everyone. I'm Dennis House. Electric vehicles. What is the future of them here in Connecticut? Plus loneliness. The state will tackle what it now calls a major health problem. How will they do that? We'll ask the Lieutenant Governor, Susan Bicewitz, who also provides some insight about Women's History Month, her relationship with Governor Lamont, and does she want to be governor? Mortgage rates, where are they going and is it a good time to buy? The CEO of Rise Mortgage, Jonathan Esposito, is with us. And our positive vibes, the new Jonathan the Husky. You'll meet that famous dog coming up. And we'll take it to Rocky Hill. But first up on this week, the lead, our conversation with Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewitz, the highest ranking woman in the state and a fixture on the political scene for more than a quarter century. And with us now is the Lieutenant Governor of our great state, Susan Bicewitz. Governor Bicewitz, good to have you here. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be back. Good to have you here. We're going to have a wide ranging conversation today, some fun questions at the end. We'll move okay. to the couch for that. We're also going to talk about the legislature, Women's History Month, and a few other things. But let's begin with the top priority right now for your administration at the legislature. What do you want to accomplish? It is to pass our sixth balanced budget, keep our tax break in place, which people are going to see in 2024 when they do their income taxes, and to continue to pay down our debt. As you know, that there was a little bit of a shakeup on the Republican side, on the Senate side. Does that concern you at all? Um, Midstream for them to be changing leaders? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to affect what we do in the state Senate, where I have the honor of presiding. Uh, it'll just mean there'll be a different person who is making the either opening or closing arguments for their party. I know one of the things that you're tackling this session is loneliness. Tell me about that. You know, the governor and I were very intrigued with the Surgeon General's report that came out last May uh, saying that loneliness is an epidemic in a healthcare crisis in Connecticut and across the country because 60% of people in America say they're lonely. And you think, well, what does that mean? Well, the health impacts are huge. Um, being lonely is the equivalent, the Surgeon General says, of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Interesting. And the healthcare costs can be really huge. So people are at risk of getting dementia at a 50% higher rate if they're lonely or getting heart disease or stroke um, the risk is 30% more if they're lonely. So this is something that we have to tackle. So what can the state do about it? Well, the good news is we're already doing a lot about it in that many of our state agencies have programs to help connect people with one another. As an example, um, delivery on Meals on Wheels to older adults, programs at our DVA for veterans that could be lonely, programs for kids through our Department of Children and Families. But a lot of people don't necessarily know that these programs are available. And I think we need to have healthcare providers asking patients when they come in, hey, what kind of social contact and socialization do you have? Um, I just listened to a doctor a week ago who said that her only contact with a person was when she had her doctor appointments. Interesting. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people who say that uh, the COVID epidemic made it worse because people were home. They're working remotely. We still right. have a lot of state workers still working all by themselves at home. Would you encourage bringing them back to and, help tackle and this crisis many of as well? Them, and many of them are back and are back for three days a week. So that's already happened. And there are, of course, a lot of state workers who are on the front lines, our um, state troopers, our corrections officers, our nurses, teachers, they have to be in person every day. Quick question about um, electric cars. It seems to be stalled right now. What is the future of the Lamont Vice President administration? What do you want to accomplish in terms of what about that original ban that was called for of gas powered vehicles, new ones by 2035? Yeah. Do you want to revisit we, that? We, we do. And uh, where it stands is there's going to be a public hearing because uh, there was some thought that we would pass something during a special session. And then the 
consensus was, well, really we want the public to have the opportunity to fully weigh in on the proposal, which is aimed at uh, addressing climate change by reducing emissions in cars and joining a group of states like California to try to lower our emissions for the future. Should the state set an example and have more electric cars in their fleet? So uh, they should and we're working on it and uh, we should also have uh, more um, incentives for people to drive hybrids and electric cars because that certainly is the future. But um, gas powered cars are also becoming more and more efficient. It's even hard to charge an electric car at the Capitol right now. Should there be more charging stations? Yes, and we should be building an infrastructure of charging stations everywhere so that everyone has access whether you're in inner city New Haven or whether you're in Putnam. And that's why our bill recognized that it would take us years to get that infrastructure in place. I want to talk a little bit about Women's History Month. And I know there are some women you'd like to talk about, but I first of all want to talk about a woman you wrote a book about a while mm -hmm. back. And that was the first woman elected governor, really in her own right in the United States. And that was Ella Grasso 50 years ago this year. What did you learn about the way women uh, were perhaps treated in politics by writing that book back then? Well, so Ella Grasso was a trailblazer um, as a state representative, secretary of the state, congresswoman, and then governor. And she was, you're right, the first person, first woman to be elected governor all across the country who didn't follow her husband into office. That was her significance. And there were only two other women that had been governor, but they followed their husbands. So what I learned was politics was a very tough business then, and I think still is now, uh, for women. Uh, but Ella Grasso stood out because John Bailey, who was um, Democratic Party chair at the time, someone who's responsible for helping to elect um, John F. Kennedy to the presidency, a Bribikoff to the United States Senate. Um, John Bailey thought that she was talented, competent, and capable and thought she could be governor. And so it was his vision and her talent and good work as a politician that got her there. But it wasn't easy because there were very few women in the legislature mm -hmm. at the time and very few women party leaders at the time. She faced a lot of obstacles because she was a woman, which she over, you know, overcame most of those. Do you face any of that today, 50 years later? Do, do, do women leaders still face discrimination and perhaps some bias? Um, I think they face challenges clearly in our legislature. We are not 50-50. Um, there are about 30% women in the legislature. Um, we need to do better. I remember back in the early 1990s, people were talking about 50-50 in the United States Congress by 2020. Well, clearly we never got there because we're at 25% in the Congress and in the United States Senate. So still very far to go. Let's talk about the four women you'd like to address today and salute on this Women's History Month. There are, of course, thousands all there, across there, our state, but the there four are, you... There are so many, but I picked just a few. Okay. One is New Haven's own Constance Baker Motley. And not a lot of people have heard about her, yet she was a trailblazing lawyer, jurist and politician. Um, she was someone who was very involved in the civil rights movement. She was one of the partners of Thurgood Marshall bringing segregation cases all across the South. And she argued 10 cases in front of the United States Supreme Court, winning nine. And the one she lost was later reversed. But she helped desegregate uh, colleges and universities and the like other three? Mississippi, Georgia. The other is Maria Sanchez, first uh, Latino state representative elected in 1988 and a leader in the Hispanic community. Um, Mary Hall, first woman attorney. She became an attorney in the late 1800s. And my colleague and friend Denise Napier, first black woman elected to constitutional office in the whole country. Yeah, I interviewed her when she stepped down and decided not to run for a fifth term, right? She was elected four right. terms, which is pretty right. amazing. Yes, so. very successful. All right, more with Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz in just a moment. We're a little bit later in the program. We'll be right back. But first, 
Is now a good time to buy a home? What about those mortgage rates? We'll be right back.